Mixer? I think it's called the ISS Mixer, yeah, you're right, it's yeah. a, sort of a gathering of uh, folks from the ISS that uh, appreciate a free drink and uh, you know, <laughs> That's a the long industry, story, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a long day. And I'm here with John Allen from Quantum, nice to meet you sir. It's a pleasure, thanks for having me. So I've been in this industry 22 years, really? and for some reason I've never met you. I have no idea why, So it, it has to be something to do with the people you mix with. Yeah, where are you from? Um, Nottingham. I'm from Leicester. Well, there you go. Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right. Yeah. I've heard of Quantum, obviously. What have you heard about? Stabilizers? That's correct. Okay, That's good. Right, okay. Just, I'm sweating. It feels like it's a test. All right. So well, stabilizers. <laughs> so they're, they're the best stabilizers in the world, clearly. It's... We honestly believe they are the best stabilizers in the world. In fact, I have to tell you, I think the U.S. Navy thinks they're the best stabilizers in the world. You got the Navy contract. I have, and also the United States Coast Guard, who uh, currently have 75 ships under construction, which also have one in the corner. So I have to believe that the government they are the best. we might be good. All right, so it's an Englishman who's going to point this close to you. Because you're more interesting in this than I <laughs> So, as an Englishman, how the hell did you get the U.S. military contract? Well, I have a U.S. passport and um, lived in America for 35 years. Where about in the U.S. are you? Florida, Fort Lauderdale, oh, Florida. Florida. Yeah. How we've never met? We have drinks at the Quantum Bar every Friday. You should come Quantum up. Bar. Yeah, we have um, in our building. We have a bar on the third floor, so we have like uh, cocktails on every other Friday. So how, all right. So you're the best in the industry. You've got oh, your military contracts. So even better, we invented the zero speed stabilizer. That's a stabilizer that works when the ship's anchored, you know. And let's say 15 or 16 years ago, that technology didn't exist. So when the ship anchored in a, you know, uh, you know, with gas and uh, owners and charter gas, uh, the boat, if the boat rolled, there was really nothing they could do about it. And typically, that was when the boat rolled the most, and, and that was the most important time because that's when the owners of gas were, you know, enjoying the boat. So I think in. Uh, about 15 or 16 years ago, we built the first stabilizer that worked at anchor, called the Zero Speed Stabilizer. And what do they do? They just like... Yeah, they kind of, you know, we have a sort of a, a fin design that uh, lends itself to operating like a large paddle when at zero speed and also works quite well underway. So it's a bit of a compromised system. But, uh, you know, the end game was that Say 17 years ago, there was no such thing as a zero speed stabilizer. And if you go to St. Martin this winter, every boat over, say, 45 meters in the anchorage will have a, some kind of a, a, an active stabilizer system that works at anchor. It's, 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 we know somebody who uh, works. We know somebody at Seakeeper. Yeah. I'm sure they're like a competitor type of thing. Well, I, I don't think, I think Seakeeper have a really good, good product. But it's, it's not really been a, a, a competitor for us because we have like a different marketplace. So they typically aren't so worried about boats. Their focus is on boats under 40 meters or something. And we're, we don't really, most of the stuff we do is 50 meters and above. So, so our product's not very good on small boats. And, um, and uh, I, 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 I wouldn't like to speak for Seakeeper, but I would think that their product is not spectacular on really big boats either so what um, he said was it will be in 10 years time people will be out on their boat going what boats used to rock uh, maybe yeah, it could be Ooh, how did, how did, it's just an amazing concept that it's great and they've done a really good job with the product they have a very high quality product i think it's i don't know so much about it but what i'm told is who's yeah, this sea keeper, sea keeper. No, get some stuff. Well, for us, we're you know bigger boat guys, but they do have a good product. Mm. So okay, I, I, I am fascinated as to how you how did you get into this? Um, well, uh, I worked uh, in shipbuilding in America, and I got interested in stabilizers, and I sort of just 
started, you know, worked on stabilizers, then we sold some other people's stabilizers, and then we uh, built our own stabilizers. So, 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 you know, it's one of those things that you didn't make a plan about it, you didn't have a business plan or anything, you just kind of took every day as it came, and then, you know, one day you look back and you, you do something, you did something. So. But I'm really fortunate because I work with some awesome people. Um, we have a, a group of people in Holland, part of Quantum's in Holland, and we have Dr. Dennison, a um, really great designer, uh, Hans Holmes, Dr. Hans Holmes, another, uh, you know, landmark uh, controls design uh, gentleman, fantastic production here in Holland. Also in Florida, we have a great team of engineers and naval architects. We have a manufacturing in Florida. Uh, we have training, um, so we are, we're able to do training for you know, most of the government work you do, like military ships, you have to be able to uh, do, provide a training course. So we have an entire training department. Uh, we have uh, uh, technical writers to write the technical the manuals and the documentation. So we're like sort of like the whole package. We develop and design our own software. We write our own code. We do all our own design work. And according to the Marin, Quantum spent more money testing its products at the Marin than any other... Um, manufacturer that they have dealt with alone. So we developed a zero speed, we, we required the assistance of a you know sort of a third party institute like the Mari, uh, which we used I've used extensively for about 10 years now. Both in conjunction with our customers but also um, on our own with our own test equipment and our own ideas. We have three world patents, uh, stabilizer patents and we're a hundred people deep. I'm sorry, I've never... <laughs> you go ahead of it's your company. Well, yeah. I'm also really good at making a coffee and stuff too. Okay, so you can do the... <laughs> make the coffee and do the... Uh, make the coffee, yeah. Do, do the that. toilet. Do all that. I do that as well, yeah. And, uh, oh, Lord. Yeah. All right, and so what was your background before, before moving to America? Or do you... I was just a, I was an apprentice engineer with the Ministry of Defence and uh, and a toolmaker. So you actually did an apprenticeship? Yeah, 1974. Jesus. All right, <laughs> because my brother and I always have this um, anger that we don't really there's no men in the world anymore. You know, we're all sissy boys who work on computers. <laughs> yeah. My, my grandfather he was uh, an engineer at Rolls Royce, yep. and he uh, apprenticed at Rolls Royce and worked his entire life there. He's still got his toolkits. Yeah. Immaculate. Nowadays, you go to Home Depot and buy a piece of a drill and it breaks in a year. So, you're ex I don't know where I'm going with this, but I just, well, the guy who's done an apprenticeship. Yeah, isn't that great? So, um, I think apprenticeships are a great thing. And, uh, you know, certainly most of the guys I work with, there's uh, eight or nine uh, English guys in our company that are all, you know, apprentice trained, you know, fitters and tool makers. And, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's the basis of everything. Uh, I think ultimately, uh, it's the it's the, it's what you learn in the sandbox that carries you through the rest of your life. And the sandbox could have been, you know, when you were a kid, but it also could have been that apprenticeship where you learn to, uh, you know, file a piece of metal or do something like that. And, uh, so we have that. In fact, in our company, all the uh, our general manager uh, was a toolmaker, uh, a warranty manager was. Uh, Worked on battle tanks. He was a, uh, you know, an engineer. So pretty much everybody had some kind of a uh, hands-on training. Can we come and do a tour around your? Oh yeah, you place. see, you're, well, we'd love to have you. On a Friday, on a Friday. Oh, you, 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 uh, yeah, well, yeah, we invite. You know, we used to have about ten or twelve people. You know, <laughs> and we used to have a sushi night. So yeah, it's open, but we don't charge. But uh, yeah, we have a beautiful uh, building. We, oh, I mean. We believe it to be beautiful. It's, uh, we just finished building it last year. It's 35,000 square feet. Um, it's in a preserve, three stories. We have a full gym and a spinning room. <laughs> we work in a really good industry. When I, when I first uh, got into this industry, I think it was like the late 70s, early 80s, I, I thought to myself, well, it's kind of a bit of a waste. You know, there's all this, you know, people spend all this money on these, these you know, these yachts, you know, well, where's that going? But then when you, uh, you know, in retrospect, you think back about it, there's always going to be really wealthy people in the world. And the fact that those wealthy people are going to spend the money that they have and invest it 
in these basically bespoke machines that require craftsmen. You can't build a boat, you know, in a computer. There's no 3D printer blowing our boats yet. So, so whoever designs it, whoever sits behind a computer, ultimately needs that man or woman to be able to pick up a welder or a grinder or a, a spoke shave or a linisher or a polisher or varnishing or whatever it takes. But it requires all of these skilled people. And probably one of the few industries left that has this great freedom of, uh, of artisanship. And that's what we have. We've got to stick to it and we've got to help promote that within our industry for young people to be interested. One time I met this guy, I can't remember his name now, but he was telling me, he said that, you know, like, people want to be lawyers and uh, uh, doctors and all these things because there's so many TV shows about, you know, how great it is, how great it is you know, LA Law or, you know, whatever the, the show is for the doctor's show, or whatever. But if they actually started a show called Detroit Tool and Die, and it was a bunch of tool makers going out at night. Maybe more people might be interested in, you know, those skills too, or you know, something like that. Who knows? Oh, wonderful! There you go. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.